All right, right back at it, reading the book of Revelation. Uh, there's 22 chapters in the book, and uh, we are on chapter 10. Uh, reading from the New King James Version, verse 1. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer, but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter, and he said to me, You must prophesy again about many people's nations tongues and kings that's verse 11 this is the word of the lord praise the lord this reminds me of a dream that i had last year a vision dream a pseudo vision dream i call them because i'm usually half awake half asleep when it's something serious and i was thinking of the, the strategies the enemy was about to start doing back then the strategies of deception in the last days and I was thinking that it would be sweet as honey that people would look at it and say ah this is the answer this is a savior this is not that um, there is an Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist is out already, is, has already gone out into the world. Um, but not only that, but people have idolized solutions to humanity's problems as if that is the solution and that is the savior of the person. But of, of course, in all things, give glory to God, right? And so I commend people that um, will give glory to God, even if they, you know, they think, oh, well, um, the Lord has blessed science to come up with this or that. And, and that um, is to be given glory to God. But I say be watchful. Be watchful. Because we are in the last days. And for me, for example, I'm not anti-vax, but... I am very anti, I'm not going to do something that I know very little about. And if something is very new, and if you go to clinicaltrials.gov, government sponsored website, and you look for COVID uh, adverse reaction trial, clinical trials, they are just at the start of it. We're not going to know much until at least a year from now. And of course, the uh, the argument could be in desperation. Well, so many more people are going to die if we don't take it. But can you imagine that we have over half the population vaccinated with very little information? They trust the science, right? 
And the creators of the virus are pushing the vaccine. That's alarming to me. But, you know, um, not a conspiracy, uh, but this is very suspect. And so um, one thing I do know, though, is many of my very intellectual friends or many, many people out in the world that are intellectual, many of them, there's believers and there's many that are unbelievers. And so, you know, as we know from scripture, Paul had mentioned that um, uh, in for, in First Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 20 let's say verse 20 where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this age has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world I'm going to read all the way to verse 25 for since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block into the Greeks foolishness but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. And so, you know, the, the Greeks, um, in reference to, well, any, a Gentile, because the Jews or the Gentiles, right? The Greeks seek after wisdom and, and that's very much Gentile-ish like in today's age very non-jewish okay in order for an atheist who isn't a jew who isn't by blood or tribe um is a gentile or a non-believer let's say a non-believer but this person is going to seek after wisdom right and so so one of the things that i have a heart for is my intellectual community and being that I'm um, still pursuing higher education I have a heart for that because I can understand the struggle um, I've always believed in the Lord as a child I believed in the Lord and I, and I I couldn't believe that as I grew older that people would fall away from faith or that they wouldn't believe in God because they would just think well you know this is impossible but I mean it's so easy for them to believe in science because science is a faith in and of itself you have to really have some faith to believe that we came out of nothing but to say that we were created by an almighty creator now that's something and if we can't explain that then of course we can't explain that because our minds are finite and we know through evidence that our minds are finite if not, then we would have all the answers to everything. If not, if if our minds were not finite, then we would have the cure for cancer. And of course, many things are being researched. But can we stop death from happening? No, we can't. Because we don't have that power. But God is the only one that can resurrect someone from the dead. Right? And so, um, science can't do that resurrect someone from the dead perhaps prevent someone to die um, perhaps yeah and the Lord has given knowledge to humanity to make that possible but to resurrect a dead person to life is divine it's a God um, it's it's God inspired it's it's only by the hand of God can we be healed in that manner and and we will all resurrect as believers um, one day you know the coming the second coming of the Lord uh, but not only that but even today there are people that are proclaimed dead and they and they come back to life and that's not science because science gave up on them and declared them dead in the hospital 
date of death, time of death, and it gets recorded, and yet people wake up after having stopped breathing for minutes or hours. And so it's to, to the Gentiles, um, preaching Christ crucified is foolishness, right? But really, if we do not come to the knowledge of God, um, then we, we won't know the truth. And so, um, there's a verse, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 13, that says, um, Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily, steadily at the end of what was passing away. Let me uh, let me read a little bit further on here. So that was verse thirteen. But their minds were blinded. Verse fourteen. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. And so, um, that is the reading for today um, this was this was fun so revelation chapter 10 has some beef into it basically what my takeaway is that we um, when something is gonna go down uh, and it's unfavorable deception is gonna come through a sweet taste at first just like sin it, it tastes good it, it appears to be good but it's not it leaves a bitterness afterwards and so when um when john was told you must prophesy again about my people uh, about many peoples nations tongues and kings and it just reminds me of what paul said it to the Corinthians in first um, Corinthians chapter 14 I believe when he says that you know pursue love verse 1 actually I'm going to read it real quick I just love the word of God oh my goodness I just get so excited um, first Corinthians chapter 14 verses 1 through 5 one of my favorite passages pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church I wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you prophesied for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification amen and so prophecy um even you know it, it's something to when you pursue love desire spiritual gifts and the spiritual gifts is prophecy um love is is a byproduct of salvation it's like if we receive salvation we're gonna have god's love and he's gonna be indwelling in us and we're gonna want to love people we're gonna love him and we're gonna love others you know but it's saving faith that gets us to the point where we will start to love the lord it's like when the lord says believe in me 
do you believe this side if you believe in me you will never die right and so it's just saving faith is belief but after we believe the lord imputes himself into us and then we can love and that's just so amazing to me um now um in first corinthians chapter 13 um verses uh one two three Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love it profits me nothing my goodness amen and this when it says though i give my body to be burned check this out i just keep cross-referencing verses and whatnot it reminds me of romans chapter 12 another passage that paul the apostle also wrote verses one to verse verse two one of my favorite passages actually regarding the um, sacrifice the, the body sacrifice that we give to the Lord I beseech you therefore brethren my by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and I love this because verse 1 and verse 2 boom it just it goes hand in hand right you give it it's it's what Paul's mentioning hey if you if you though you give your bodies as burning sacrifice as a living sacrifice burning sacrifice you burn your body I mean you just sacrifice your body right it means nothing if you have not love so this is why I feel like verse 2 2 of, of chapter 12 of Romans mentions do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind we need to let Christ take over that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God now if we stay in the word if we stay in the Lord if we stay in him then we will know the truth if we abide in him he says if see knowing um knowing the truth and the truth will set us free it's not okay yeah but abiding in him um he says abiding um he says ab abiding in me uh what is it john chapter 8 verses 31 to 32 i like to read from the new king james version but any version will suffice then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if we abide in his word, now abiding in his word, one, we have to read it. You know, we have to read the word. Two, abiding in it is practicing the word, is allowing the Lord to do what he needs to do in and through us. Apart from him, we can do nothing because he is the vine and we are the branches. But we must allow the Lord to take over. If you abide in my word, he says, you are my disciples indeed. And once we do that, and you shall know the truth. I pray everyone you have a blessed day or night depending on the time of day uh, you're listening to this and that the Lord just bless you that the Lord blesses your heart